my god, I think that was one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. I'm trying so hard not to cry, I'm like, she. She looks at the paper, and then she looks at me, and she's got this like kind of confused look on her face, and she said, Monday morning. As of today, the day I'm filming this, I don't know when it's gonna post, probably a couple weeks later. I am 34, between 34 and 35 weeks pregnant. So 34 was Wednesday and, I'm sorry, 34 was Thursday and today is Monday. So 34, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and four days. I have my doctor's appointment today to follow up on the growth ultrasound. So I just go over all of like the pictures and everything with the doctor. The tech that did the ultrasound said everything looks great. Baby's measuring right on track. Everything looks good. So of course I'll bring you guys to the appointment. I'm gonna try to FaceTime Adam in. I see the doctor today. As of now, she's running on time. My appointment's at 10.30. I feel kind of a little crunched this morning because I had some stuff for my boss that I needed to get done. Right now, I'm just eating breakfast. I'm going to hop in the shower. I have conditioner dried in my hair. Adam and I went to the pool last night just kind of for an evening swim to get some exercise in to try to help the swelling in my ankles, which has gone down tremendously since we got the air conditioning fixed in our house. Who knew? But when it gets really hot, they do start to swell. So they swelled yesterday. We sat outside and ate lunch at a restaurant in 105 degrees. So we went to the pool, came back. I washed the chlorine out, and then I put... Uh, conditioner in my hair because dry summer Las Vegas it's getting dry and now I have to wash it out that's when my hair kind of looks funky and then I will head out I'll tell you what the doctor says I know she said that she's going to throw a crap ton of information at me uh starting this appointment well starting she told me third trimester but so far there haven't been too much but it's been early third trimester now we're getting close because technically you guys in two weeks baby will be fully developed i'll be 37 weeks in two weeks so he can come between two and five weeks we're back with my outfit of the day i love that i could do this in here now with the full mirror because in the other room you couldn't really see me i obviously did not get a chance to work on those bags behind me. So I'll do them when I get home. My outfit really quick is a simple, kind of like sundress. I have so much laundry right now that this is what worked. So the doctor is gonna have to get to my belly. I always wear shorts underneath all of my sundresses now because it feels more comfortable to have my belly supported with them, but also chub rub girls chub rub it's real nowadays so i just want to tell you guys this dress i got on the clearance rack at ross for drum roll please 49 cents i am not kidding because like a little bit of this was frayed and a little bit on the sleeve was frayed but who cares i took scissors to it and it looks perfectly fine i wore this actually to the baby shower that my friends out here threw for me it was so sweet with some square toe white heels i don't think i have a picture of myself in the heels because we took off our shoes in the house to keep it clean but i could put a picture of the heels up there i thought the outfit was so you know dressy casual cute pregnant shows off the bump the huge enormous bump nowadays we're getting there so today i just put on a pair of really really cheap sandals they're rose gold just a little silver necklace same as always my movement watch and my david yerman inspired bracelets from amazon i've got to head out i love you guys and i'll be back with what the doctor says oh she's probably gonna check if i'm dilated in the face at all today too i think i don't know i think 
maybe dilated i'm probably not a fan i don't know is that too early i don't know you guys i know nothing i guess i'll know more today after my appointment i love you guys gotta go They brought me into the room. The nurse practitioner came in. I love her. She's such a doll. She's like, I can't believe you're already 34 weeks. I'm like, I know it's flying. And she's like, did anybody talk to you about induction? And I said, well, Dr. said that by 40 weeks, I have to be induced if he doesn't come naturally. I didn't know inductions can take like two to three days until literally I watched Sierra Schutze's video. And I think her induction took like three days. So... <laughs> We had that little conversation. She's like, okay, I'm gonna take the baby's heart rate and then the doctor will come in and see you. So we're chit-chatting and I was like, you know, I said, I heard usually first time, first babies like to cook a little bit longer. And she was like, yeah, she said, well, my daughter came at 38 or 39. She said, but my son was second and he came at 40 something. So then she's like taking the heart rate, the heartbeat, what is it, the heart rate? I don't know, I'm so frazzled right now on a couple of different parts of my stomach. And she's like, hmm. she's like, something's up with baby's heart rate. She said, it's going up and down. She said, I don't know if you could hear that. It's not constant. She said, it could just be the Doppler. It could also be an arrhythmia. So because of your age, let's do a non-stress test. Usually we wait until 36 weeks for that. Since you're here, since something's up, since basically since you're she didn't say that of course i'm saying that but because of your age she's like let's just get let's let's do it now make sure everything's okay so as she's walking out of the room i'm like trying to process what's going on and i said if it's an arrhythmia like will that will he be okay like will that correct itself and she's like it should and then two minutes later the tech comes in she's so cute she got me all hooked up to the little monitor i took some pictures for you guys i didn't take any video i was just like getting nervous I texted Adam not thinking because it was my nerves and I should have waited because I made him nervous but I was like something's up with the baby's heartbeat you know she said it could be the doppler she could be this take the exit I really don't think anything's wrong I was like I'll call you as soon as I can he read that as call me as soon as you can so he called me about 50 times and I couldn't answer the phone because I'm hooked up to this test and I didn't want to answer the phone either because I didn't have any answers for him I shouldn't have texted him at all so they left me on there for about what felt like ever but it was probably about 10 minutes and the nurse practitioner comes in and she looks at the piece of paper because you know like as they're they're monitoring like with a little monitor up here monitoring my contractions and a little monitor on the bottom monitoring where the baby's heartbeat was out of the machine comes the paper with that tracks the heartbeat so she looks at the paper and then she looks at me and she's got this like kind of confused look on her face and she said does baby have hiccups and i said well not right now but he does get them a lot and she said okay looks back at the paper looks at me with like a very quizzical look now our eyes are locked and we're both like like we're both confused i'm confused by her face like what the hell is going on with my baby she's confused by what she sees on this paper and i am not feeling good about this whatsoever by the way i'm sorry i'm driving you guys it was all hands free i spoke to adam and he's like come meet me for lunch he just he was so frazzled he felt so bad that i was there by myself he's like i was about to get in the car and come find you because i wasn't answering my phone i should i knew better i should not have texted him i didn't even think twice about it so our eyes are like locked she's very confused i could see concern on her face i'm concerned she said just sit tight let's monitor a little bit longer and then we'll have the doctor take a look so now i'm like i'm nervous i'm trying so hard not to cry i'm watching his heart rate on the monitor in the room by myself and there's a partition and there's people next to me so i don't want to like make a scene right i see his heart rate and staying like 
120, then it's going up, and every time it went above 130 something, it would make a beep. So it would beep above 130, so I would look. It would go from like 130 to 150 something, down to 60, then like 120 something, and every time I would feel a contraction, and they were strong, because now it's got the monitor on there, it, his heart rate would jump all the way up. So I don't know if that's normal or not. This is my first baby. I could feel my phone on vibrate ringing over and over and over in my back. So finally I answered my phone and he's like, what is going on? And I was like, I told you I'd call you as soon as I can. Like I'm hooked up to the monitor. I can't really answer my phone right now. I knew like if I spoke to him, I would probably break down and I was trying so hard not to cry in the office. Not because I didn't want anyone to see me cry. Like who cares about that? I just needed to keep my head together because here I am thinking I'm about to go in for an emergency C-section. How am I gonna tell Adam to find everything that's in the hospital bag? And at this point, I don't even give a f about my hospital bag. I'm just in my head like, I don't care if you cut me open right here in this chair, just take out my baby and fix him. Like make sure he's okay, please. So this is all going through my mind, right? Now I'm like, oh my God, like I'm gonna have a baby with a heart problem. He's gonna have to go through five million surgeries. My mom had prolapse valve. Your mind races when they leave you in here. And it feels like an eternity. So I told Adam, I was like, listen, I was like, I'll call you as soon as I know more. I'm trying to talk him down. I'm like, I'm sure everything's fine. She said it could be normal, blah, blah, blah. He's like, who's in there with you? I was like, no one. He's like, who were you talking to? And I'm like, the nurse practitioner. Now, they're at the desk, which is right behind the other side of the partition. They could hear everything I'm saying. I'm trying to be quiet. They probably think Adam's like a lawyer or a politician, the way he looks every time he goes into the office with me. So maybe about 10 minutes later, I'm off the phone with Adam. We were only on the phone for two minutes. I was like, I'll call you when I know more. I just wanted to get off the phone with him because I knew the longer I spoke to him, the more I would be closer to breaking down. And I knew I needed my head together. I honestly, you guys thought I was going in for an emergency C-section today. So, and for some reason in my head, I was fine with that. I just like knew I needed to keep my shit together. So, you know, you go into like mode, but meanwhile, I'm petrified. After I'm watching the heartbeat go up and down, up and down, like all these swings, the doctor and the nurse practitioner walk in. And the doctor was like, I was listening from the desk. She goes, I don't know if you could hear. She's like, his heartbeat sounds regular, but then every once in a while, it'll skip one. And I'm like, yeah, I heard that. I didn't hear that. I don't know what I'm listening for. All I'm watching are the numbers jump up and down. She said that is actually totally normal. She said, normally, we don't even find that at the office because we're only listening to the heartbeat for a few seconds. She said, so she did great. And I looked over at the nurse practitioner and she looked petrified and that's why I'm saying I don't know if they think Adam's like a lawyer and they heard me on the phone with him I don't know what they thought but I felt so bad I was like thank you so much it's not her fault she was helping me out so I was like thank you oh my gosh thank you the doctor's like typically we find this during labor and labor and delivery it's very common the reason is because mom's heart rate and baby's heart rate are different so when baby's inside their heart rate kind of has like an arrhythmia because of that but it usually, like almost always, corrects itself after the baby's out. She said, but because of your age, I'm gonna send you over to high risk to get a fetal EKG, right? Is that echocardiogram, ECG, EKG, whatever, echocardiogram. They will call you within the next day or two to schedule that appointment. You're coming back next week. She said, do you have any questions? And I said, no. I mean, what, what am I gonna ask? Like, I don't know. So then she was like, okay, well, if you know, if you get anxious, she said, if you have any questions, just call the office at any point. I said, wait, I said, you know, I've been working out still. I was like, can I continue? She's like, everything. You can do whatever you're doing. You are fine. This is, this is normal, baby's okay. I rushed out of there like a lunatic because I could not wait to get on the phone with Adam because I knew he was freaking out. I don't blame him. I was freaking out. And I'm like tr still trying not to like melt down. I'm, my hands are shaking. And I'm coming off the elevator and there's like a woman and a man, like an older woman and a man. And I was like, oh, like I didn't know if I should stop and let them go. I didn't know if I should go. So I just was like rushed out in front of them and the lady kind of like made a comment, which I was rude. I don't, I don't care <laughs> right now, but I was kind of rude. Whatever. It happens. Called Adam on FaceTime. He was so apologetic that he wasn't there. I'm like, it's not your fault. It's COVID's fault. It's just the nature of the situation. It's, it is what it is. But it's funny because I, you could see my eyes look like I was crying. I, I promise I was not crying. I wasn't. I would tell you if I was. I always cry on video. I was like, honestly, I'm not crying. He's like, why are you wiping your eye? Because this one eye is leaking from allergies. I was like, I would tell you if I was crying. I promise I'm not. He's like, when water comes out of your eyes, that's tears.
tears. I was like, right, but allergies make tears. Like, I was very close to having a meltdown, but I would tell you if I was crying, I'm not. <laughs> so he's like, what are you doing for lunch? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't decided. Like, I, I don't know if I want to go over across the street and grab something. I don't know if I want to go home. He's like, why don't you come here? Let's go to lunch. I stopped across the street to go to the bathroom because he's like, why didn't you go while we were in there? First of all, I didn't realize I needed to go so bad. Second of all, I just wanted to get to the car so I could call you and help your anxiety because I was freaking out. I know you were probably freaking out. Ran to the bathroom. I'm on my way down there. This is really long. But that was the most traumatic experience ever. And I was texting both of my sisters that are pregnant and, um, and they were like, oh my God, that's terrible. And I was like, you know what's so crazy though is that you can love this little person so much that you never even met. And I was so willing to do anything for him. Like literally if they were like, I'm sorry, we're not gonna be able to give you anesthetic and we'll have to cut your stomach and take the baby out. I would be like, oh, that's gonna suck, but okay, do whatever you have to do. Like, that's how much you love this little unborn child. That's part of you. And uh, I was like, welcome to the, the rest of our lives. I, first I was gonna say the next 18 years, but no, like welcome to the rest of our lives as moms. We have an extra doctor's appointment for at high risk. Oh, I'm having a contraction. She said they're totally normal, unless you get more than four in an hour, which I don't. She also told me for you guys that are new mamas, Braxton Hicks are the tightening contractions, and those are fine, you can have those all the time. And period like cramps are contractions. And I told her like the past couple days I've been having period like cramps, and she said, well, more than four in an hour, you have to call the office. But I don't know, I just have them and they, they just stay. <laughs> I don't know if I'm having four, I know I'm having a big one, that's it. But obviously he's not coming out because I was just at the doctor. I feel like I was just hit by a truck. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.